Hey everybody, Andrew here, and it's time for another review of sorts. I have this idea of trying to do something where I talk about movies that I think get a lot more hate than they deserve. Because I've always been the kind of person that's like, I always have movies that I love that people just hate on for no real reason. Or for whatever reason they have. And some of them I can completely understand and be like, okay, I totally get why you don't like this. But others, it's just like, they have such hate behind them and I just cannot comprehend why. Because to me, they're just a really interesting or a really good film. And it's just like, there might be like one or two little nitpicks that just people focus on and that's all they see. So I'm going to be doing a little series from now on every once in a while that I'm going to be calling Fighting the Hate, where I take a movie that I think gets more hate than it deserves. And I talk about it. I'd give you basically what the plot is, what my thoughts on it are, what people complain about and why I agree or disagree with those and things of that nature. And there's going to be spoilers, especially for this first one here. So the first film that I'm going to be talking about is Rob Reiner's North from 1994. Howdy, North! Here you go, North! Hello, North! Where's our son? North! 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 A new comedy from Rob Reiner. Rated PG. This is a film that Siskel and Ebert made the worst film of 1994. And I don't understand why. Like, this is still on some people's worst films ever made lists. And I don't, I don't get why. But overall, I'm like, I, this to me has never been a film that deserves to be even considered a terrible film. Let alone a film that was nominated for eight Razzies. Like, it's not that bad. It's, I wouldn't even say it's bad at all. But that's what I'm doing this for, is my chance to defend this film and talk about it a bit. So, I'm going to start by breaking down the plot and going a little bit over the story. Spoiler warning for a 25-plus-year-old movie, but I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to go over the whole plot of North, and that ending is definitely going to be something I talk about. So, North stars Elijah Wood. This is North, the world's most perfect kid. Basically, he's, you know, he's an athlete, he's good at school, he does theater, he's part of the be baseball team. And, you know, he does a lot of things that he thinks are really important, and he find, and he knows that he is appreciated by all of the other parents around him. A lot of parents are going up to him going, we wish you were our kid. North always looks both ways. North never spoils his appetite. North flosses. Except for his own parents, who kind of exist in their own world and are only understanding and appreciating of what has to do with them. And this stresses North out, and he ends up having an anxiety attack because his parents are just bickering over each other and not even acknowledging that he's trying to talk to them. So one day, North decides, you know, I'm going to go to my favorite spot. I'm going to go to my thinking place. I'm going to sit and be in isolation and think about things. And his thinking place is a furniture display in the mall. And he's sitting in his thinking chair, and this man in a bunny suit comes up to talk to him. And the man in the bunny suit turns out to be Bruce Willis. Who are you? I'm North. See your name on maps. Very impressive. Funny in its own right to have Bruce Willis in this bright pink bunny suit nibbling on a carrot. It's just freaking hilarious. The Easter Bunny basically looks at him and goes, it's like, well, it's one of those things of, you know, family is important. They are the people that you are with. It's not like a sports team. You can't just move to another team if you're not treated well. The one thing that we cannot control in this life is who our parents are. You felt the hand, you stuck with it. To, you know, it's best, what you need to do is go home, tell them how you're feeling, and get on for it. And North is like, wait, what was that part about trading to a different team? Why can't I trade in my parents for better parents? So he leans back in his thinking chair, and next, it cuts to him going to see his friend, Winchell, who works in the school paper. And Winchell, and North presents this idea, and Winchell's like, that's a great idea. We need to get you a lawyer so we can file a divorce from your parents and get you so you can have new parents. And they end up getting a, um, you know, ambulance-chasing lawyer named Arthur Bentz, who is played by John Lovitz. And basically, John Lovitz fills out the paperwork, and they print it in the school newspaper, and they spread that nice paper throughout the town, and North's parents see that paper, and they immediately go into a comatose state. 
So they so they end up going to court, and the parents are there, but they're still completely paralyzed in that shocked state. And the judge is like, well, uh, since the parents aren't here going to defend themselves, I'm going to allow this. Uh, North, you have till the end of summer to find new parents. However, if he is not physically in the arms of either his new parents or his original parents by noon on Labor Day, he will be remanded to an orphanage. <laughs> so North starts, they spread the news that North is looking for new parents and he starts traveling around the world to find new parents. His first, first place he goes is to Texas where he meets Ma and Pa Tex who are played by Dan Aykroyd and Reba McIntyre. And they are these rich, full-on, you know, oil-drilling, ranch-owning Texans who had a son named Buck, who was this big, giant beef of a man, and he died in a stampede. And their plan is to turn North into Buck. And so they have, like, his entire la life planned out, which they do to a musical number set to the theme from Bonanza. Which is pretty funny. They even have his future, the woman they, like, you, oh, you're gonna marry this girl at the end of the table. And North is like, leave, leaves there, he goes out into the field and is like thinking about, it. like, this something's, this isn't working. And he meets this uh, sharpshooting cowboy who is also played by the man in the Easter Bunny suit. Easter Bunny. AKA Bruce Willis. And he's like, you know, you shouldn't be with people who want you to be someone else. You should be with people who love you for who you are. So, North decides he takes the advice, he decides he can move on to the next family, he ends up going to Hawaii, where he, meet, he ends up meeting the parents of the governor and Mrs. Ho, and starts to learn a little bit about Hawaii, but finds out that the Hawaiians want to use him for advertisement, basically. They want to be like, well, he chose, you know, North chose Hawaii, so should you! And they literally have him in a uh, knockoff of that Capitone ad where the um, crab is trying to pull down the, someone's swimsuit. Except in this one, it actually does pull down a swimsuit and reveals uh, North's bare butt to the entire world. And North is traumatized and decides, nope, not doing this. And decides to go on to the next family. Uh, ends up going to Alaska, where he meets, ends up going to an Inuit family meets with the family there, and the family's played by uh, Graham Greene, Kathy Bates, and they have a grandfather played by Abe Vigoda. And, and Abe Vigoda's character has gotten so old that they now have to journey to the edge of the ice to send him out on an ice floe to die. And North goes with them to do this, but it's like, by the end, he's like, I don't think I want to be part of a society that sends people out into the sea when they get old. So he gets back to the airport and is like trying to fly out. Real finds out that his time left has shrunk dramatically. That that journey took weeks, and now he has me less than a month to find his new parents. Now I have to rush through a bunch of families. So he goes to an Amish family and is like, "Nope." Parents who have old-fashioned values. Marriage. Not doing that. Goes to a French family. Doesn't work there. And parents who have taste. <laughs> goes to China. Parents who have style. Give him the emperor cut. That goes to Africa. Parents who will educate him. Tuma Farahi Sana Umafik. I lived here. Not sure I get much homework done. All of it's all quick nopes, not doing that. <laughs> and he ends up back in America in with this family known as the Nelsons. And they are basically like the living embodiment of a Norman Rockwell penny. They are just kind of perfect. And they appreciate him, and he has siblings, and all these, he has everything he's kind of ever wanted, but North realizes that he is still not happy. And he ends up talking to this slate driver, who is also the man in the bunny suit, a.k.a. Bruce Willis. I thought you looked familiar. Of course I look familiar. I'm almost famous. And it's like, well, they're good people, they're just not your people. So North is like, okay, I need to go home and I need to go back to my parents because that's where I belong. So he starts to travel back to New York. During all of this, uh, Winchell and the lawyer have been using North's 
actions to start a business and to gain power and to basically using all of the kids in the neighborhood and all the kids in the area. It's like we now have the power over the parents because any of the parents act up, we can do what North did and leave them. So now they have to treat us better. Winchell and the lawyer do not want North to go back to his parents because they will lose all of the power and stuff that they gained through these actions. So they end up hiring someone to assassinate North. North ends up actually, while trying to get back to his parents, ends up running to a bunch of different versions of Bruce Willis. One is a comedian, one is a FedEx driver, and they end up getting him to his home, but his parents are not there. They're in his favorite spot. So North runs to the mall, starts heading towards the parents who are finally out of their comatose state and are waiting for him. The hitman shows up, the gun fires, and North wakes up in the mall in his thinking chair. And turns out the entire story had been a dream. And he's like, oh, and but he's realized some stuff, and the Easter Bunny shows up again and gives him a ride home, and he greets his parents and tells them everything that, you know, how he's feeling and everything that goes on. It ends on a positive, happy note. And, yeah, th I'm not... I enjoy a lot of this film, and I, I kind of get some of the things that people complain about. Because, first off, it the entire film is a dream sequence. Uh, yeah, I get that being a complaint. Because a dr film that is entirely a dream sequence is the equivalent of lazy writing, usually. So, because a lot of times you have that where it's like, we build up, we, we wrote ourselves into a corner, and only way we could think to get out of it is, what if it was all a dream? Like, yeah. But actually, with this film, I honestly think it kind of works. I do dislike the fact that the dream sequence isn't insane enough that you can immediately catch that it's a dream. Which is my big problem with a lot of these dream-based movies, is they are always really sub dude where dreams don't can be but they tend to also be somewhat insane but it also go helps with the second big problem with this film if you know it's a dream and you take it as a dream sequence because i know one of the big problems with this film is the racial stereotyping and the casting of non native people to play you know hawaiians and inuits and it's like i 100 percent get the, the, you know, Hawaiians and Inuits being mad that they had Chinese people playing, you know, Hawaiians, and they had freaking a Vagoda as an Inuit. Like, I 100% understand that being a problem. However, if you take it as this is a child imagining these cultures and the way he's heard about these cultures, because... The only way that we know he knows anything about any of these cultures is that he, at the very beginning of the film, you see his room is filled with snow globes of each of these places that he went to. And that is probably his whole knowledge of Hawaii. And it explains away things that don't make sense, like why the Hawaiians are still living in grass huts and have no thing close to modern society. Or the Inuit people are still living in igloos and pushing people out onto the ice to die. Like... They don't do that anymore, and having these white people and these roles, I can see as being problematic, and I completely understand if that is an issue. But I take it as this is a dream sequence, you know, and North hasn't met Hawaiians. He hasn't met Inuits. And when you dream, you put in people that you know. Like, you can't make up a new face in your dreams. It's all based off someone you know subconsciously in some way, shape, or form, or it's a mixing of faces that you already kind of know. So, he put people that he felt fit those in his dream. So, like, the closest thing he might know to, you know, a Hawaiian is someone from Japan or China or someone that fits that. It is it is kind of explaining away the racism. I get that that's a problem. I take it as the... It's a simple kids' film. It's not intended to be insulting. So take it as it's just some kids' interpretation of these cultures and try to not let it hamper too much how you feel about the film. The third complaint the complaint I heard about the film is that it is um, not funny and b boring. To which I'm like, uh, 
I, no, it's it's actually a little bit funny. I'm like, it's not laugh out loud hilarious. You're not going to be rolling in the aisles in this. But there's a lot of fun, upbeat, interesting, funny moments. Like, I love when you get to the later part of the films and he's, like, going to one of those villages and he just comes out to the Amish family and they're like, he just sees the wagon and it's like, I am your mother. This is your father. These are your six brothers. These are your seven sisters. And North just goes, nope, and turns around and gets back on the plane. And just these little bits of moments. And, like, it's a boring story. It's like, no, it's a little bit slow in points. But it between, you know, what we see of North and what we see going on with Winchell and them taking over, you know, the kids gaining power, you get enough variety of stuff that it's never really what I would call a dull film. It's got something always going on, something interesting. And this film honestly has a lot of strengths for it. For starters, it's well directed. Rob Reiner is an amazing director. He's done a lot of great films. And you can see the professionalism and the skill that it took in filming this. It's not, it's a well shot, well put together film. I enjoy watching it. It's a lot of fun. The cast is great. Elijah Wood, Dan Aykroyd, Reba McIntyre, Kathy Bates, Graham Greene, Alan Arkin, Kelly McGillis, Alexander Goodenough, John Lovitz, Bruce Willis, Bruce Willis, and Bruce Willis. What are you? Some kind of guardian angel? An Easter Bunny. He got. You know, Elijah Wood as the lead. You got Bruce Willis in a role that he actually still seems to care about. Like, this isn't modern day, I don't want to, I'm doing this for a paycheck, Bruce Willis. This is, I'm an actual actor, and I still give a damn, Bruce Willis. And he does a decent job, and each of those little parts that he plays is unique enough and interesting enough. And adds this whole interesting dynamic of this is your conscience character guiding you throughout. He's the Jiminy Cricket of this film. You got a whole bunch of side characters playing interesting roles, like, you know, John Lovitz as the lawyer has his moments, Jason Alexander as Norse dad, and Julia Louise Dreyfus as the mom have really funny, interesting moments. I love Dan Acker. I love the Texas section entirely. Everything about that is hilarious. The Hawaii stuff didn't work for me even as a kid, and I kind of like the Alaska stuff. I'd like the I. I thought it was hilarious and ridiculous that they, they were still living in igloos and they had an ice TV and where you had a fridge that was made out of ice and this, that, and the other. It's like, it's weird. And I get, I get being mad about it, especially since like Kathy Bates had her skin painted to be more akin to that skit color. But like I said, just take it as a child's interpretation and, and it's one of those ones where I'm like, the first time I heard anyone ever talk bad about this, I was kind of shocked. Because to me, this has never been a terrible film. I've always, I watched this as a kid, and I watched it as an adult, and I still watch it every once in a while, and I enjoy it. But to the fact that it, you know, was, uh, that it's still, to this day, on some people's worst films ever made, and that it has like a 14% on Rotten Tomatoes, I'm like... This is not a 14% movie. This is a movie that warrants be in the high 60s. Like, I'm not going to say this is the best film ever made. I would not say that. It's not even the best film made by Rob Reiner. It's not the best film starring Elijah Woods. It's not the best film starring Bruce Willis. For what it is, it's a really well done, well put together film. Because it's a fable story. It's a Grimm's fairy tale set in the modern day. Because I've read this thing from the director, Rob Reiner, and it's like, he's like, a lot of people were really mad at me because, you know, I'd done When Harry Met Sally and Misery and A Few Good Men, and it's like, I should do more important kinds of movies, and he was like, well, why, why can't I just make a nice little fable story? That's all I wanted to do. And this film has one of the most famous quotes by Roger Ebert from it, because this is literally how Roger Ebert reviewed this film i hated this movie hated 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 this movie hated it hated every simpering stupid vacant audience insulting moment of it wow that, that this is not a movie that deserves this kind of hate it really isn't like that is something you save for you know baby geniuses to super babies or dougal or 
you know, Santa and the Ice Cream Bunny. This is, this is North. It's not a badly made or badly put together film. It's just a solid film. Like, it's just one of those things, like, I'm like, there are way worse films that came out in 1994. There are way worse films that have come out altogether. Like, if I didn't, like, the thousand worst films I've ever seen, North would not be on that list. It might be in my top thousand films I've ever seen. Possibly. I wouldn't put it in my top 500, but it's still a really interesting, really good film. And it's just a film that I think gets a lot of hate, and I'm still not really 100% certain why it gets that level. Because again, like I said, I understand that not liking the fact that the whole thing turned out to be a dream, I get it. Like, I can totally see being pissed off about that. But to me, like, it's a film like, okay, well, now that you know it was a dream sequence, watch it again. And you get more out of it. And you can pick up on these things that are like, oh, okay. The fact that it went to these somewhat extreme reactions to things makes more sense because it's a kid's dream. But it's one of those ones, like, I've enjoyed it more and more the more I've watched it. It grows on you. It's a film with a great cast, great performance, interesting story, well-directed, well-put together. It is a solid four out of five for me. I enjoy this film a lot. I don't think it deserves nearly half the hate that it gets. I know I'm I know some people agree with me and this film has something of a cult status, which is good. It but it honestly I don't think it deserve it deserved to just be a, a film that everyone watched and enjoyed. Like I don't get why this film gets hated on, but other films got so much love you and even though they're way worse, like it just it happens, but yeah, like the fact that the fact that one of Roger Ebert's most famous quotes came from reviewing this film, where he had to say "hated" so many times just to talk about freaking North is just—it's ridiculous. It's not a film that deserves that much hate. But you know, that's just my opinion. What do you all think? Do you all agree with Robert? Ryan? Robert Ebert, it's the, this is one of the worst films ever. Did you like this film? Do you have, Did you have other problems with the film that I didn't talk about? Let me know what you all think in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. If you have films that you would like me to review in this style, please let me know. I have a couple others that I want to do in the future. I'm not planning to do this on a regular schedule. This is not going to be like every two months or something. But I, every once in a while I'm going to do this setup and talk about these films. Because... There are some films that really, truly deserve far more love than they get. And I feel that North is one of those. But let me know what you did in the comments below. If you have films that, like I said, if you have films that you think I should defend, let me know. If there's films that you think get too much love and you want me to do a spin-off series called Fighting the Love, or whatever we want to call it, I would, I'm considering doing that as well. But let me know. I will see you all later. Happy watching, y'all. Bye. Howdy, North. Here you go, North. Hello, North. Where's our son? North. 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 A new comedy from Rob Reiner. Rated PG.